I've also led on the issue of education. And I know a lot of you in your states are working hard on this. We all probably are more attuned today than maybe many conservatives were 10 years ago on just how important it is to get the education issue right. Not that people weren't concerned about it, because they were, but we've seen such an attempt to use the schools as tools of, of indoctrination and all kinds of other things that we know we're not going to be successful as a country uh, if we go down that road. So in Florida, we're proud to have been ranked number one in the nation in education by U.S. News and World Report. When we had the first post-COVID NAEP scores, Nation's Report Card, Florida ranked number three and four respectively in fourth grade reading and fourth grade math. I can tell you that wasn't true as a kid when I was growing up in Florida, so we've done a lot better than we did a generation ago, and it helped that we actually had kids in school during COVID, unlike some of these other states which kept them out for a year or more. Part of the reason we've been able to increase test scores is because we have the most school choice of any state in the country. And we've expanded it in this legislative session where we now have universal ESAs. But what's happened is parents now have options. They can go to a private school. We have 363,000 students in charter schools, which are public but not controlled by the school district and hence usually not influenced by the education unions. And then you have the 67 counties that all have their separate school district. And what's happened with the school districts is they want these students too. So they've actually embraced choice within their own districts. So if you're in South Florida, like Miami-Dade, uh, you can go to charter, to private, and probably a handful of public schools within your school district. 75% of the kids aren't even going to the school that they're zoned for anymore because you have so much choice. Because you have that, it's created healthy competition, and our test scores where they used to be in the bottom 10, 15 states 25, 30 years ago, you know, we now uh, are in the top. And if you say three and four for the fourth grade reading, fourth grade math, if you control for demographics, we'd be number one with that. If you looked at just our charter school population, which is disproportionately low income and minority, if that was a separate state, just our charter students, that would be one of the top performing states in the United States as well. So this works. We've proven that it works, and it's something that I know other states are emulating, and we would certainly encourage you to do that. We've also stood very strong for the rights of parents to direct the education and upbringing of their kids. It's sad. It's sad that we're even having this debate, and this is personal for, for me and my wife because we've got a six, a five, and a three-year-old at home, but we want parents involved in their kids' education. The only reason you wouldn't want the parents involved is because you worry that the parent would represent an impediment to you imposing your agenda on somebody else's kids. When Biden says they're not your kids, they're all of our kids, you know, that's what he means. Now, he's not talking about visiting his granddaughter in Arkansas or even acknowledging she exists, but never, never mind that, right? So they're not all of our kids. They're your kids. And schools and our school system doesn't exist to supersede the rights of parents. They exist to support the community, uh, to support this important mission. And so we've embraced that in the state of Florida. Uh, we've listened to parents on things like eliminating Common Core, which we did uh, early in my administration. We've also uh, recognized the importance of recruiting and retaining good teachers. So we've put billions of dollars in increase for teacher salaries since I've been governor, but we said it can only go to teachers not to bureaucrats and not to unions. And we actually did paycheck protection for teachers in Florida so the education unions can't do automatic union dues deduction from their paycheck. We've also drawn a very clear line in the sand. The purpose of our school system is education, not indoctrination. We want to have schools teach the basics. And so that's why we fought to do things like not have gender ideology in kindergarten, where they're telling students that they were born in the wrong body or that their gender is a choice. And we stood up to the left and the media and even big companies down the road here to make sure that we are standing on the side of parents and standing on the side of the innocence of our children. And that is a line we in the state of Florida are not willing to cross. We are going to stand up for our children.
You also see, and you've seen the left try to demagogue that, you know, you get to this point. So we have curriculum transparency. You can come in, parents know what's being taught in the school. And unfortunately, there are things that are totally inappropriate that are being put, particularly in these early grades, things that are pornographic, for example. Now, if you walked into a fourth grade classroom and someone was playing an X-rated movie, you would take that movie out and that would not be appropriate. No one would say that you've banned that movie from society. So when they try to do book ban, that's a hoax. Uh, nothing's being banned in Florida. You can do whatever you want as an adult, but to inject that into a fourth grade classroom, you know, is wrong. Adult material shouldn't be in a fourth grade classroom. You want to look at adult material? Go watch Hunter Biden's laptop for all I care, but don't do it to our kids. So, so that's a hoax, and we fought back against that. They also now have a, so we, a couple years ago, did a law to uh, uh, prohibit critical race theory from our K through 12 schools, because we don't want them to use history and distort it to support a modern day agenda. You teach the facts. And so as part of that, they actually accused at the time, because you don't want CRT, you don't want anyone to learn about African American history, which that was a lie. And so we had the Department of Education or the State Board of Education uh, had a working group of African American history scholars that really beefed up Florida standards. I mean, probably the most dramatic anywhere in the country. And you now have people like Kamala Harris trying to perpetuate a hoax saying that these African American history scholars, many of whom were black, some of them who descended from slaves, are creating a curriculum saying it was good? Are you kidding me? Who believes such nonsense? And so it's a total hoax. Uh, and it shows you, though, why are they doing that? Why would they come down when you have all these other problems, come down to Florida and lie about something that's readily checkable if you just look at how robust the standards are? And it's because they know in Florida we are contesting their right to use the schools to advance their agenda. We are teaching the honest history, good, bad, and ugly, teaching all the injustices with respect to slavery and a whole bunch of other things that happen. But that's not good enough for them. They want to wrap that in and be able to use that uh, to advance their modern agenda. And these scholars were not interested in that. All they wanted to do was provide the facts. And so I'm glad that their lies have been exposed by people like Kamala Harris. And we're going to continue to stand up against phony media narratives when it comes to education. Final topic on education. We are also reforming higher education in the state of Florida. At the end of the day, our public university systems exist to serve the people of our respective states. They are supported by taxpayers. They don't have the right to just do whatever they want, regardless of whether it's benefiting uh, the people who are funding them. You need universities to fulfill the traditional mission of a university, the pursuit of truth, academic rigor, preparing our students to be citizens of our republic. They are not meant to indoctrinate students in political ideology. That is not a good use of taxpayer funds. So we've laid down the marker on that. We've also now have in Florida all tenured professors must undergo review every five years and can be let go for poor performance. And we just signed legislation that the legislature passed that we've uh, nixed this whole idea of DEI in our public universities. I don't know that it's constitutional after the Supreme Court's decision with respect to racial uh, discrimination and admissions, but it is discriminatory. It's ideological. And DEI, we say, you know, it, it stands for discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination. And that has no place in our public universities. So we've stood up for that. And guess what's happened as we've done it? We've seen a flood of applications coming. You know, the media will say, oh, some of these professors are leaving, like, new college. Like, isn't that a bad? Is that a brain drain? Well, you know, if you're a professor in, like, uh, you know, Marxist studies, that's not a loss for Florida if you're going on. Trust me, I'm, I'm totally good with that. 